Hello. Here's no kitty, but there's one. Hee <laughs> So this is a new kitty cam angle because I've been using some of my extension cables to get my camera just on the ground on the up on the other side of my room and this right now is her favorite place. It keeps on changing, this is her current favorite place. And yeah, we can look at her while she's just while she's sleeping. Look at her. So cute. Ooh. What is it? Did you hear something? Did you hear something? Just gonna change the angle a little bit. <laughs> so cute. So adorable. These kind of like um, cardboard, I don't know, platforms, like little scratching thingies that she's uh, that she's lying on, are pretty nice. I got them for free because. Um, I can collect points at the place where I normally order cat food and and litter. And that was one of the things that I got for free in exchange of, the, uh, of these points. And yeah, they were pretty nice. Pretty neat. And you can hear some new music in the background. Um, also, I can switch over here. There we go. Hi. So, there is some new music playing right now. Well, this one in particular is not new. Also, I think it's not properly updating, is it? What's going on again? This is a song from Popsky. Why are you not showing that it's a song from Popsky? What's going on? Let's reload this and hope for the best. Now it's showing it's Popsky. All right, there we go. So. <clears throat> I got an, a lot of new music uh, because I've been just going through OC Remix. If you don't know what OC Remix is, it's a website um, full of video game music remixes. That's it. It's, it's like a community of really skilled musicians who just love making music. And there is a lot of really good music on there. And I've been going through those and you can like search after like genres, like tags, uh, or like after musicians, uh, after original composers, or after video games, or like platforms and whatnot. So the, uh, <clears throat> if you search for something in particular and specifically, then uh, chances are you'll find some kind of way. And I've been just searching through video game franchises that I like, that I love. So I've been searching through a lot of Zelda music. And that took me a long time, because there are like hundreds of songs. And I went through every single little song, because I didn't just want to search for just one sp specific genre that I normally go for, like synthwave and metal. But I wanted to be more open for other types of music. Um, <clears throat> there were some. Um, there were some. There are some kind of tags that, when I see them, I immediately uh, skip the song. 
those set attacks are like marches or dubstep or any music that had uh, some kind of vocals in it because it's not really suited as background music it's too distracting for me uh, and so on uh, so, so those kind of tags i avoided but other than that i was pretty um open for anything and found a lot of good really good new music that also uh, is going to mix up my playlist quite a lot it's not just metal and synth wave and then you know, some um you know like bp sounds from <laughs> from old video games but there's all sorts of stuff in there Let's skip some songs that we already know, that already were in my playlist um, and go prefer those, uh, those new songs. So, as I said, I got a lot of Zelda remixes and also a lot of Final Fantasy remixes. Uh, and this is where I am right now. I am, I, I, was, I was done with, um, of, with Zelda music. And I went through all of the individual Zelda games, from the first Zelda to, uh, you know, Wind Waker, and then to Breath of the Wild. Also, I have to say that OC Remix is a really old community. Actually, it's when when did it start? Actually, ah, I wanted to look it up before the stream, and I forgot. Let's see. Let's see remix. I have no idea who is interested in that right now, but I am interested, so... <clears throat> uh, let's go to the about section and read a little bit about them. Founded in 1999, huh? that sounds about right. Like there were some songs that were as old as like really early 2000s or something like that. And so yeah, it makes sense. 1999 that goes back quite a while at this point uh, and yeah it's a community dedicated to the appreciation and promotion of video game music as an art form its primary focus is ocremix.org a website featured a thousand of free fan arrangements information on uh, on, 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 on game music and composers resources for aspiring artists and a thriving community of video game music fans Huh? And uh, the nice thing is, OC Remix lets you play their music, uh, and like of every single of every single artist and every single game, uh, you can play that music for free in your videos and streams. You just have to credit them, of course. Like you have to credit OC Remix and the original artist, which. You can always see displayed over here. Currently, it's Will Rock, who is also a really good artist that I found through that website, and I want to find more music from him. And yeah, then that's great. I, I, I that I don't have to worry. And all of that music is different enough from the original, so that it should should avoid any accidental um, copyright claims because they they were just too close on the original composition and, and the original sound of the of the song so yeah let's hope for the best but OC remix itself and those artists shouldn't really shouldn't have any complaints so where is hope again ah, well let's switch to that this camera here in the meantime, she's probably outside. I just think she doesn't like when I talk. <laughs> it's just she doesn't doesn't like when I do noises and she just wants to go outside. Oh well, what can you do? Poor little princess. Oh dear. Um Is there anything else? They wanted to say about also remakes or anything about the new music. Well, I can talk about it more while I'm drawing. 
<laughs> awesome burpee. I'm sorry about that. So let's talk about my cloud uh, painting progress. So here you can see a painting that I'm currently working on. I started it yesterday. Where the hell? No, no, two days ago, but... Uh, what's the second? And yeah, I've been doing a lot of practice paintings of Alto Cumulus clouds, or cloud clusters, you could say. Um, and I've posted them, but I can show them again around here. So, yeah, I can show it like this. Why not? So those are, those were some of the recent ones. Oh, maybe I, I'm gonna show it like this here. Um, so, kind of like to go back in the timeline. This was one of the, this was one of the um, Alto Cumulus practice paintings that I did during a stream. Uh, together with this one here, as I remember. We're okay-ish, but they still lacked something. And then I did a couple of paintings off stream. And that one did not really go well. And it's just meh. That one especially is like too... It's just like, looks more like uh, a lot of individual little ball shapes grouped together that I don't know what the, what that was what even is oh god and here a more simplistic style just to, to to practice the shapes and it's just doesn't really look like a pattern but more just lots of individual long cumulus clouds and this was the one that finally made me find out a technique that works really well for painting those. So, the way I did those kind of paintings was just, I I had some guidelines that I followed, like some, like some streamlines and the, the clouds followed those kind of streamlines and I painted every individual cloud like that. Um, whereas here, here I tried a different uh, technique because I was painting uh, like a, a cumulus, alto cumulus type of cluster that was really closely packed. Um, and so instead I had the idea of just, if it's already like that closely packed, why not just paint everything in and erase the gaps in between so it's like the opposite way instead of painting the individual clouds i paint everything full and then just cut out those ridges along those gaps in between those individual clouds and that worked so much better oh my god and then i found out a little a few other tricks here and there and like for example if I, if I start with a mid-tone, so I don't get, I go for, for completely white or for the darkest color, but just the middle, the middle tone, um, it also works really well. Um, because um, if I show this here, right now, this only has the middle tone and it looks flat. It looks just like some kind of weird shapes like two-dimensional shapes floating in the air doesn't look that great that's because shadows and highlights are still missing so i'm starting with the mid-tone and then with the help of the shadows the darker colors and the highlights the, the brighter color basically white um i can establish more of that 3d effect later on um and so that's the kind of the the process uh, here another one that I also really like how it turned out. Um, a bit more from a distance. 
those might be already in the in the range of zero cumulus instead of alto cumulus because they're just so small and here this one took me a while because it's like just this kind of texture this kind of like uh, um, texture that kind of uh, follows the the opposite way of, of this kind of wave shape took me a while to figure out but also uh, it went decently and so we're doing this here right now so as I said before I just painted everything in with this exact color here nothing else just one color and then cut out the, the gaps in between very carefully and with a kind of a more softer brush. So not just like super harsh looking edges or anything like that. No, just very softly here and there. <clears throat> and just carefully shaping everything. So also one some of the things that they have to consider, well painting this kind of gaps in between the clouds is um, those aren't always the same kind of width they are going to vary of course sometimes there's bigger gaps and sometimes there are almost no gaps whatsoever and also perspective plays a role so if they're closer and more above you um, then the gaps are going to appear much larger than if they were very much in the distance and the, the, the clouds are starting to overlap each other, of course. And that's basically the process. Also, um, another thing is I um, have to make sure that these kind of clouds are um, fading out at the edges. So it's not just solid color all the way, but they're getting more and more transparent the closer they get to the edge and kind of like fade out a little bit. And here and there I can add some more details. And this kind of painting process um, can vary a lot in, in, in terms of time investment you can add so much little detail to it or you can just do it quickly and uh, still get decent looking results but the paintings that I showed before these kind of paintings didn't take that long actually it didn't take that long which is really good um, we are relieving <clears throat> Because let's re be real, if I, like those are so many individual tiny cumulus clouds and I cannot put that much detail into every single one of them without wasting so much freaking time. But this way it, it works out. So, um, the shape is for the most part okay. Oh yeah, also, another thing that I want to add later on are these kind of power line things, towers, whatever you call them. Uh, and just because, you know, I had the idea of like, this is kind of like a pattern, a repetitive pattern. And so why not just put another pattern over here that also repeats itself over and over. Just, that was that was the thought behind it. And it, it looks nice. It always looks kind of nice. And I want to have a scene that mostly just is just all uh, pointing towards the sky. But if it's just sky, then I don't know. It, it's most of the time missing something, so I wanted to have at least something something else over here that's ground based. So um, let us add some shadows, shall we? 
know. Let us try to make everything look a bit more three-dimensional. I'm very relieved that I finally found a a technique that works pretty well. The only problem with that technique uh, is, however, that it's only really suited for digital art because of the erasing stuff. And if you're using traditional media, then erasing color might be pretty difficult to maybe even impossible. Like one solution might be that you have like just the, the white canvas and you kind of paint the the sky color in uh, like in this kind of grid shape that might work i don't know maybe i'll try it by myself <sighs> sorry well, i forgot that i have the shadow color <clears throat> So probably in the tutorial itself, I'm going to um, explain both ways, like how to paint them by just painting the, the individual clouds, um, or by erasing a pattern out of like a large blob, a large area of paint. It is still not back. And of course, I'm starting to starting to feel pretty hot because I'm streaming. Adrenaline is pumping through. Yeah, but it hasn't been that hot recently, I have to say. Um, <clears throat> um, a couple of days ago, during the uh, weekend, it stormed quite a lot and. If you've been checking out the news, then you might have uh, actually seen um, those reports about the floods in Central Europe, in Germany and Austria and other countries. So yeah, it's been wild here. Here in Vienna, we're fine. Um, <clears throat> because we have a lot of... Um, capacities for for these kind of flood waters um, they did a good job at designing these kind of systems for preventing floods here in the city the last time that, that there was an actual flood uh, that reached over the banks of of the river and into the houses of here uh, is is a really long time ago and we learn from it. So yeah. I am definitely not worried that things might get out of hand over here. But in other areas in Austria, uh, they are not as flood proof as, as we are here in Vienna. Listen, I love listening to all of this new music. It's like extra exciting. Like everything, all of this stuff that I also had beforehand was really good. Um, but you know, just maybe un maybe understand this kind of like feeling of new music and and listen listening to it is, is kind of special. Is I, I don't know. It's extra exciting. And it's all, it's all video game music too, from video games that I know, at least most of them. Um, 
and so I ha also have these associations with like those specific places and events in those video games and that's why I love uh, video game music so much uh, among other reasons of course um, just simply yeah it, it awakens memories nice memories And then you might ask me, how do I have even that patience of going through hundreds and hundreds of songs uh, and going through all of them, listening to all of them and seeing what do I like, what do I not like, what is suited for the stream and what's not. And well, I just like doing that. That's, that's simply uh, what it is. It takes a lot of time, but... Well, first of all, I'm able to do other stuff while listening to music, so I haven't been just sitting here for hours and hours and just going through these songs. I've been painting a lot, like these Alto Cumulus paintings that I just showed before. I did while uh, um, listening to these remixes. <clears throat> and I just... I also like collecting music. I, I'm a, a bit of a, like a collector in, in uh, for certain media. I like collecting music and um, I don't know, like also channels you could say, like YouTube channels and yeah, some other stuff too. And like it just. I love going through these kind of libraries because it's it's a little bit of an advent adventure. You go out there, you don't know what to expect. You just look around, explore everything, and then if you just invest in enough time, then you're bound to find some kind of treasures, and, and that's always very exciting. You know, like. Who doesn't love finding treasures? And OC Remix is full with treasures. Full of hidden gems. That you don't really hear anywhere else. The ori originally the, what gave me the idea of even checking out OC Remix a while ago. Um, <clears throat> was um, GDQ. Games done quick. Because... Uh, they also started um, playing remixes of video game music instead of the original video game music itself. I do not know why, uh, what has caused that um, decision, although it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe they just want to you know, support these little artists, you know, and, and OC Remix. That could also be. Yeah. Um, before that, before I went on this like this 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 um, searching spree, I also already had some songs of, of uh, from OC Remix that I searched out, but just searching for some kind of like synth wave or something like that. And but I didn't really spend that much time searching for stuff. But now I'm really into it. And I go through... Uh, oh man, I already have a, a long list of games that I want to search for too. Um, as I said before, I've searched through Zelda games, so I'm done with that. 
franchise and I'm also doing Final Fantasy and I'm also soon done with that. <laughs> it's also, it's also <coughs> sorry, as it reflects. It's also kind of interesting to see what game franchises um, brought a lot of remixes forth, um, or like just what individual games even. For, for for example, Zelda. <clears throat> uh, the most remixes was, and it's probably not really that ex that surprising, was Ocarina of Time. I mean, yeah, it, it probably has the most fans, and it's just the most no nostalgia. Um, and the newest games basically had the least amount of remixes, except for like. The DS games, or, or um, what? In, what in? What was the platform again? 3DO, or you know those those ones that aren't even considered canon. They're just completely ignored. Was it 3DO? Uh, now, now for some reason I cannot remember the, the system's name. Like, but but like you know, games like Wand of Gamelon, stuff like that. Just can't remember the the system's names right now. <clears throat> but yeah, but that and that and those games barely have any remixes. While Ocarina of Time has over 100 different remixes. Um, but of course, the time factor also plays a big role. Breath of the Wild, for example, also has barely any remixes um, because it's just so much newer. So there was way less time for people to remix music. Um, but there are also other factors. For example, Breath of the Wild also. Even though it's a great game, it's lacking in in the music area. I'm not gonna lie, it's it doesn't really have a lot of like very memorable music. It had some interesting stuff going in for the like in game. It makes a lot of sense to music, like this kind of like. Um, Kind of like <clears throat> this, um, I don't know, this the piano that is playing while you're riding on a horse, uh, or just these subtle accents that you hear every now and then while you go through the wilderness. For the game itself, it makes a lot of sense, but the music is not very well listenable outside of the game. Like I don't think that there uh, any like barely anybody is is gonna go ahead and say, huh, I want to listen to the horse ride uh, riding music right now from Breath of the Wild. Not really. A few people maybe, yeah, but most most people not really. And then other games like you know, Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker and and The Link to the Past and so on <clears throat> really had a lot going on in terms of music. A lot of very memorable tunes that a lot of people remixed. Not just an OC remix, but it's just in general. I hear. Do we have a kitty cat? Do we have a kitty meow?
Clean up the turret. The shape of these clouds, of these individual clouds, are probably not gonna stay as they are right now. I'm gonna do more of that later. Oh. Mm, what's it doing? Rotating around. Slowly rotating. Well, that's the problem. My my apartment is not really um, balanced. Kind of tilted. And so, yeah, stuff is. Rotating around uncontrollably. It's cute. It's so pretty. So after this painting, I'm probably gonna do maybe some um, Alto Cumulus Clouds in the sunrise setting and then some in the night setting. Uh, and then I will be probably done. And I can move on to the next type of clouds. And that will probably be... Um, um, What are called again? Uh, today I just cannot really think straight. Uh, Cumulonimbus, of course. Uh. 
you, you would think that after these months of, of studies and research I would be an expert at this point and remember everything perfectly? Nope. Yeah, I've been also talking about games that I want to check out on OS Remake, so I have a list going and I wrote it down because otherwise I would forget. So, other games that I want to check out are Okami, of course, Okami. This game has so much awesome music and I'm curious what I'll find. Um, Pokemon, of course. And Pokemon probably also, again, is gonna have hundreds and hundreds of songs. But that will probably take me a while too. Also because there are just so many games out there and so many songs in general. Undertale and Deltarune, of course. Uh, that's just... It doesn't need to be explained. Mega Man. I'm not the hugest Mega Man fan, uh, but there is some good music in those games and I would like to check them out. Fire Emblem. I'm a Fire Emblem fan. Monster Hunter, maybe? I like Monster Hunter, but... It doesn't have the most iconic, memorable music, I would say. At least in my opinion. Uh, Chrono Trigger, of course. What else? Octopath Traveler, yes. That game has some really great music. Uh, and then some classics like Diddy Kong Racing uh, and Banjo Kazooie. Those are some fun songs, you know. And I'm curious of what will be. Uh, under those remixes, what kind of genres and what what people came up with. Then Mario games, of course. Just general Mario games. There's some fun songs in there. Uh, then a game called The Messenger. I'm, I'm not so sure if I'm gonna be able to find anything. Uh, but that game has some really great music too. Now that I think of it also, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight. <clears throat> um, and then some more classics like Wayfair 64, just the first 60 Nintendo 64 game that I had. <sighs> Sorry. And then also Yoshi Story, because Yoshi. Those are some games that I want to check out, and that's gonna take me quite a while until I'm done with all of that. Currently, as I said, I'm still in Final Fantasy land, and I'm gonna have to move on to these like more than a dozen of games. Maybe Pokemon and Mario are gonna might have as many or even more. Remixes like, uh, as like Final Fantasy and Zelda, but the uh, a lot of the other games are probably uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna be able to finish those pretty quickly Going through those remix lists
Also, I have to say that I noticed um, that while uh, when I was painting while listening to all of these songs, I was much more focused and much more productive. I didn't go tired or bored or exhausted that uh, that easily compared to when I, you know, was just having some kind of stream running in the background or something like that. And it probably has to do with the fact that I was like also collecting music. If I would just just be listening to music, uh, then probably it still would be unchanged. But but I was also actively doing something else. I was not just listening to the music, but also really paying attention to it uh, in order to, you know, uh, figure out, do I like this? Is this suited for my stream? And then every now and then, like I have to actively close all of the, of the tabs. That's, that's one of the things. I have to open every single song as a new tab. Uh, there is a play like a playlist feature for this i think but the problem is also that in that kind of view you cannot see the tags and i want to see the tags because then i can very quickly see oh okay this song has vocals in it i am i'm gonna completely skip that immediately or something like that but yeah that also meant <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. I had over a hundred of tabs open just for all of these individual songs and I'm going through every single one of them one after another. Um, shortcuts are really great. you know shortcuts make your make your life so much easier and just control W for closing the tab made everything so much more efficient. Uh. And then one thing that I just noticed because I opened the stream, um, the software that I'm using for displaying the song names and stuff, um, I thought it would just take the file name, and the file name is kind of a mess. Uh, because it just uses underscores for every single space and I hate how it looks like um, And it doesn't automatically include the artist's name But all of these mp3s and you download them as mp3s have that information in the file information uh, That's not uh, the file name And the software that I'm using is very nicely able to you know, as you can see, let's see. The next song, yeah, that's an OC remix. If you if you see the the layout, it starts. It starts with the artist's name, so here in this case is Aero C. Then the game title, uh, the the game itself. And then, in quotation marks, the title of the song, and then OC Remix. So the layout is very nice, it's very structured, perfect. Don't have to change anything. But I didn't know that, and so I was also changing the file name of every single download that I had, and tried to make sure that it includes the, the artist's name and is more nicely structured, and it all was for naught. Yeah. Oh no, not the software I'm using for displaying this here does that, but Winamp, the, the, the music player is doing that, now I know. What I like about these remixes is also that they don't just take the original song and just change the genre and that's it. 
like they just make a, a metal version of the same exact song or or a dance electronic music version or whatever else a jazz version um, but they take a lot of creative freedom and it's probably also part of um, that community because if you check out the, the website and some of the songs then under every single song you can see a comment section and you find comments under every single song with like very detailed feedback from other artists from other musicians who, all, who know what you're talking about and give them constructive feedback and uh, that community seems to really encourage creativity um, which is great it's it's fantastic and so people are encouraged to experiment around uh, and bring in their own flair into those remixes and not, not just okay I have a series of notes I take the exact series of notes and just put them under different instruments maybe here and there is a little bit different but that's about it there we go we have a metal cover or whatever cover and that's not how these these remixes work they have melodies and uh, recognizable melodies in them but uh, they do some very creative stuff with those songs for sure and that's i love that it's it makes it it makes the song a bit more unpredictable but also it's a lot of it is still very enjoyable to to listen to and I guess that there in in general there is a, a thing to be said about like predict pre, uh, predictability uh, if that's how you say it uh, in songs in music and if it makes it more or less enjoyable and it's a, probably also a very um, subjective kind of thing but you know, you cannot be completely random uh, and unpredictable that will just confuse the listener. I mean, some people kind of enjoy it and there's like the more of the j experimental uh, branches of music where they just do... They, 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 they do just whatever and completely ignore the norms. Um... But that's definitely not for everybody, for sure. And especially for background music, it's it's nice to... Uh, a, there has to be a certain amount of predict predictability and repetitiveness uh, and just easy easiness for for, for to listen to it um, you don't have to focus really strongly on the song uh, in order to enjoy it and it's important it's just background other things are more important Hmm. I have to say I went into the stream expecting that I wouldn't really talk all that much because I uh, I felt kind of tired um, and then I started the stream and got more energetic and and I've been talking and talking and talking and you know I was thinking like normally I would make some uh, some tea in order to have something for my, for my voice when I talk a lot otherwise gets quite exhausted and I was thinking nah I don't I probably don't really need it today it's fine I'm gonna be lazy well now I'm regretting it <laughs> so I can already feel it a little bit in my throat but then I have water but the water alone is not quite enough
Oh yeah, also yesterday I felt a little bit sick, very suddenly, out of nowhere. Uh, I highly doubt that it has anything to do with the vaccine. It, uh, at this point, this is almost two, uh, two weeks ago. And I only had side effects uh, on the day right after the vaccination. Um, and that would be like weirdly far apart and and pro it's probably because of the temperature fluctuations that are going on right now. It's getting hot and then it's getting cold again and because it's storming and then it's getting hot again and then like also very strong differences between day and night and it's just uh, all over the place and the thing is also and I'm suspecting that was the main mistake that I did is I just used the wrong blanket while I was sleeping um, and it was a bit too thin and not well uh, isolating enough and I have the windows open um, in my apartment uh, on the opposite sides of my apartment so wind flows through it and, and cools down the apartment during the night <clears throat> and I do this every single night and this is how I still keep the temperatures in here durable uh, and endurable that's the word um. but yeah um, it got a bit too cold while I was sleeping and I did not have any uh, good isolation on me and so my body cooled down probably a little bit too much and I got a bit of a cold because of it but it only lasted for half a day so like during the second half of the day I was already fine again yeah And now I use the figure blanket again, although I'm getting, I get a little bit sweaty under it, but at least I can avoid my, <clears throat> my body to cool down too much. And at some point it's gonna get so hot that I need the, the thin blanket again. <sighs> this is... That's one of the nice things about winter, it's just that I have my winter blanket, my weighted blanket, and that's it, and I'm fine with it, and... And then during the summer it's like... Sometimes that uh, I don't need any blanket whatsoever because it's freaking hot sometimes I just need a little bit of a blanket it's just a thin blanket sometimes I need a bit more because it cools down during the night so much uh. but I think you don't need another person to to complain about the temperatures and weather I think that's oh, you already hear that enough on the internet a lot of people are complaining about it and I get it you wanna rant about what's what's exhausting you but yeah and other than that, that I don't really have that much to explain uh, to complain about because it's <laughs> ah, sorry. That disturb you. Look at how pretty she is. Oh, so pretty.
isn't she just the cutest? This painting, by the way, started out as a speed paint, but um, I put so much detail into it that uh, I was already saying, okay, no, this is not gonna be a speed paint. This is this is gonna take much longer than that. Uh, it's not gonna take as long as the freaking waterfall painting that I and that I did a while ago. And that was way too much. This just has clouds and power lines that's it shouldn't be that big of a deal but the clouds are gonna take a while and who knows how well the power lines are gonna gonna turn out although they shouldn't be too much of a problem at least I think so I hope so also I'm sorry if I'm a little bit sniffly and uh, if I have to sneeze every now and then Ever since I got sick yesterday, my nose is acting up a little bit. I don't think that I have some kind of allergies or whatever. It would be. If I, I think if I would have allergies, it would be more of a constant thing that it would, uh, um, you know, mess me up. But I'm not exactly sure. I don't really know all that much about it and have never really done a test, an allergy test, and I want to do that at some point. Uh, and also, now that I have the, that I got the vaccine, um, and almost two weeks have passed, I can probably, I will probably make the first appointments next week. Um, so, on the top of my list are like going to the bank because there was something there's something that I need to do and I can only do in person. Um, <clears throat> going to the general doctor um, or house doctor or whatever you would call it in English uh, because. First of all, I want to get a vaccine, another vaccine that I have been storing for quite a while before the pandemic even started, but good thing is that they last so long while just being stored in the fridge, so it's fine. And those are vaccines for hepatitis. And yeah, I have been not very good at refreshing those vaccines the the past 10 years and more and so I, I, I need to refresh all of that stuff and yeah hepatitis is up there that I should get done and then also I would like to do <coughs> a blood test again um just to check if everything's okay on Especially to see if my my diet is now giving me better results than the last time I, I did a blood test. Because the last time I did one, uh, the results weren't that great. Um, <clears throat> especially in the in the vitamin section, it, it wasn't that great because. I don't eat that much meat, it's expensive and it's also not not the greatest for the environment and you know also animal cruelty and all that stuff, blah blah. Um, you all know about that. But that also means that I don't get a lot of B vitamins, especially vitamin B12. Uh, 
supplement so i got a supplement for that and also i have a supplement for vitamin d but that has less to do with my diet and just simply more to do with the fact that i don't go outside often enough uh, but that's just how it is i i just don't i don't want to go outside every single day for hours and just to get enough vitamin d and it's just too much effort also I have to excuse myself, I really need to go somewhere right now. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back.
And I'm back. And hey Ulfgar, nice to see you here. How are you doing? <laughs> Catch him. yeah, very appropriate. All that new music that I have right now. <sighs> Let's get back to it. How are you doing? How is it going? So to explain again what I'm doing here, I'm well, I'm making a painting, obviously, um, of these clouds, of these alto cumulus clouds or zero cumulus, whatever they might be categorized as. They are similar enough. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, recently I found out a technique that makes it much easier for me to paint those, and so I'm very happy about that. And I'm making this uh, painting. It is gonna take me a bit longer, but now that I have more confidence, I can. F I feel like I can also put more effort into it. And yeah, it's just a very simple painting, just clouds and power lines and... Looking while finishing uh, cooking my dinner. Oh, nice. What do you have for dinner? Is it... Is it some kind of curry again or... Is there a special plan for today? Looking enjoying the music, I'm glad to hear that. I'm very glad to hear that, because I spent a lot of time <laughs> curating this playlist and it's long from being, from, from being finished. But you know, I also enjoy the search, enjoy the hunt. Okay, thank you, I'm glad you like it so far. This is curry indeed. <laughs> Chicken and mushroom sag. Sag? Sag? However you would pronounce that. But it sounds sounds very good. Chicken and mushrooms. Two things that I do like a lot. Very ex experimental. Oh, nice. Well then, I hope that your experiments are gonna go well. How do you actually normally cook? As you, uh, most of the time, do you follow some kind of recipe, or are you just um, following your own instincts, as to say, just do whatever you feel is right? Or like maybe kind of a middle ground, where it gets inspiration of recipes, but you change them? Totally following recipe, I'm not experienced enough. Oh. That's surprising because it definitely feels that you're very experienced, especially in curry making. <laughs> but I do bake changes. Uh, do bake changes, yeah. Uh, bake changes means like different amounts of different ingredients or what is this? Or is this referring to baking? I'm not very familiar with the terms. Oh! <laughs> well... That's, that's a problem I have. When, when somebody write, make, does, a, does a typo in chat, then... Most of the time I'm not really noticing it because I take everything too literal. <laughs> I see. You make, make changes. I see. Sorry for misunderstanding. <laughs> no, 
know, that served me cool. And I also don't really know, um, except for the art of cooking, are you doing something else creatively? I don't quite remember seeing some other stuff from you. Are you sometimes drawing, painting, knitting, sewing, sculpting, whatever it is? Hey, hey, how are you doing? Glad to see you here too. How is it going? Hope you had a, a lovely first day so far. Well, it should be painting though. Ah, what are you painting right now? I am, I am curious. I do cooking streams, occasional gaming streams, and I want to start making music streams. Ooh, nice. Music streams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what kind of instrument? Or is it more like a music arrangement? What do you want to do? I have a group of 11 zombies that I'm finishing for my D&D game and I need to paint some titans for my Age of Sigmar army. Oh wow. 11. So we're talking um, of like little, what do you call them, little fig figurines that you're painting. But that sounds cool and also Quite a lot. Uh, 25, uh, 32 millimeter scale. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah. It's like... Mm hmm. Lots of tiny details, I assume. So you gotta have a steady hand for that. I don't really have a lot of experience with that kind of painting, so... Sounds cool to me, though. Uh, mainly ba a bass guitar, but I can also play electric guitar. Oh, that sounds very cool. Well, I'm definitely intrigued and I would love to see some of these music streams in the future. Although the Titans are more like uh, 20 to 25 centimeters, I see. Mm -hmm. About to start a new campaign, we'll consider figurines later. Hmm. And you're also into D&D. Ah, it's been a while since the last time I played D&D, but just... It's so much time commitment is the problem. I don't have time. I have no understanding of fine art or color theory, but I can put paint on plastic. <laughs> Well, that's also a skill in itself. There are probably some kind of techniques and skills that go into that that I have no idea about, that I have no clue about. It's, it's also kind of the 
the neat thing about studying art, even though I've been doing this for years at this point, and very uh, intensively, there is still so much. And my whole life I will not be able to learn everything, and that's cool. It's kind of like there's always something new to explore. Becoming disabled uh, give me a lot more time to engage in hobbies. Oh, um, I'm s sorry to hear that um, that's the reason behind why you have so much time, but um, glad to hear that you have your hobbies. And D&D and is certainly a great hobby for sure. Not just because it's fun, but also it's like very social. And you can make uh, lots of great friends this way. <clears throat> uh, what kind of things you're painting, by the way? Uh, you're directing this question to me or to Jay? If you're just directing this to me, um, all sorts of things. Um, what I could, what I can definitely say is, I don't paint humans that much. Everyone, everyone, okay, <laughs> good. I'm included, wonderful. <clears throat> um, right now, I just really enjoy making landscape paintings. Um, I mean, there are the links that you can check out. Um, I think I have DeviantArt in my socials command. Let's see. My, my memory is not very good. Yeah, TV not, for example, you can check out and there you will see my paintings. Uh, Instagram you can also check out, but I don't post everything over there. So. Um, but also, speaking of D&D, I also made some like uh, uh, digital D&D tokens. So people can play with them on Roll20 and stuff like that. So. I made, did that kind of stuff too, and I even painted some of those, uh, drew some of those uh, during some streams in the past. You got some, you know, stereotypical elves and dwarves, and you've also got some, some, a lot of cats, <laughs> a lot of cats. You got the cheetah and the, 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 the tiger and lions and whatnot. But yeah. <laughs> um. The character avatars, uh, like the, the whole characters, and uh, like maybe that command would give you a better idea. This is the link to my shop where I have all of these tokens. Uh, where there you would be able to see what they look like. <clears throat> Going back a little bit, been missing some stuff. Uh, That's why I spent so much time in makers and crafting art streams. I see so many techniques that I feel I can steal and use for my projects. I see, I see, sneaky. Well, feel free to steal my techniques. That's that's <laughs> that's the main point of what I'm doing. I'm making tutorials, painting and drawing tutorials, and people are supposed to learn from them, or at least I hope so. <laughs> <coughs> so also, if you have any questions, by the way, you feel free to ask me whatever you want. Uh, I gladly answer anything, that's also part of the reason why I am here. Um, of course, I've been like this for years, we all have our own struggles, and I'm lucky that Canada has good healthcare. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, glad to read that you're doing well, for sure. Yeah. I paint a lot of monsters and terrain because uh, I'm a, munch a dungeon master and wargamer. Hmm. And when I was playing dungeon uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I was also the dungeon master, and I enjoyed that role the most because it had the most creative freedom to offer. Whereas as a player, you don't have that much creative freedom. Also, I'm not really good at acting. So yeah. Uh, I don't think I made my Insta uh, public. No, no. Maybe someday. 
Uh, but if you want to link to your Instagram or whatever, uh, wherever you post your um, <clears throat> your figurines and stuff, then feel free to do so in chat. I don't have some kind of <clears throat> anti like auto block kind of thing set up for links, so it's fine. Uh, Man, I wish I, I wish I knew about those tokens before my group moved back in in person games. <laughs> well, <clears throat> now you know. I see a lot of lion and cheetah people. Yeah, as I said, <laughs> lots of cats. Also, thank you for the follow, Wolfgar. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of cats, which is not very surprising. Oh, also, speaking of, kitty cat. She's sleeping now. Let's not disturb her too much. Otherwise, she's gonna move again. So. <sighs> yeah, you're a cat person too. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get along well. Uh, do you also have pets, by the way? Like, do you have cats or some other kinds of pets? Or are you planning on having some if you don't currently? And kitty can, yes. <laughs> Just notice. Yeah, the, uh, I was on the wrong camera, so there wasn't really much going on. <laughs> Not allowed pets in rented house. Oh, sorry to hear that. Hmm. I don't qu really quite understand those rules. I get it for dogs, especially for large dogs, because they can be very loud. But cats, indoor cats, are normally fine. I mean, maybe they pee somewhere and stuff like that. Or you can clean that stuff up. Or if you move and you have some kind of damages, you're just gonna pay for them, I guess. And then it's done. I don't know. Whatever. I don't quite understand. <clears throat> Hopefully, we'll buy my own flat soon, and then I'll have two cats. So I hope that will be soon then. Living together with cats is certainly very enjoyable. I've been I've been growing up with cats. There were cats ever since I was born. And Hoko, she's called Hoko, um, is actually the third generation, together with another cat who has passed away last week uh, last year. Um, And yeah, there will be many more generations. <laughs> it won't stop at, at three for sure. I've been living together with cats almost my whole life and this won't change. I have a big Bernese new found foundling mix. I have photos in my Insta if you want to, want to look. Yeah, as I said, like feel free to uh, share the link uh, to your Instagram or whatever in chat And I will check it out. Let's see. Oh Oh, it looks very sweet <laughs> The little blap <laughs> Chop <laughs> And you good girl. <laughs> ah. 
<clears throat> super new to being public on social media. No. Uh, I mean, what can I say other than like, it's it's fine. It's it, not much is going on right when you start, so it's pretty chill. It just might be some spam accounts that bother you, especially on Instagram, they've been bothering me. But other than that, it's just... You post pictures and you look at pictures, it's fun. <laughs> it's a gentle giant. Certain, certainly looks like a gentle giant. Very sweet. I am a cat person, but I also love dogs very much, and other kinds of animals. Is your uh, is your dog? What what's your name, by the way? What is this painting going to be like, by the way? Uh, like mostly what you can see right now, um, just clouds, and you're gonna have power lines, and maybe there will be some airplanes or birds. Maybe there will be some bushes or like in tips of, of, of trees here and there, maybe. We'll see. I can add that later. And that's it. And the, the main point of this is to practice. I'm trying to practice for a cloud tutorial. <clears throat> and I can show this again. I've been showing this quite often on my stream. Um, there's a lot to to learn about clouds. Um, I, I don't even know if you know in general what I actually do, so maybe I just should ex explain that. Um, I mainly make YouTube videos, uh, drawing tutorial videos, that is. And I have explained uh, lots of different topics about how to draw cats, how to draw... Uh, um, dolphins and killer whales and books and roses and whatnot uh, all sorts of different things and also covered some of the basics like color theory and perspective and stuff uh, um, and the topic that I'm working on right now and have been doing so for a couple of months is clouds and there are a lot of different types and this is also the reason why it's taking me so long because there is a lot about this and cumulus clouds and the clouds I'm painting right now are like alto cumulus or zero cum cumulus clouds the difference between those two is just the altitude and the general size it's kind of like they're basically in the same category and you see this repetitive pattern for these clouds and that's what I'm trying to imitate and I've been struggling quite a lot but recently I found a good technique for painting those and and now I'm making a more uh, detailed painting I practice a bit more also I want to paint those clouds in different from different perspectives so like uh, they're gonna be more from below from the side or even from above like if you look outside from an airplane for example and then also like during the during the sunset or sunrise and or during the night the colors are changing and the contrast and yeah there are more types cumulonimbus the, these are the actual rain clouds the thunder clouds so like those kind of clouds actually cannot rain they cannot produce rain all of these but these can because they are very tall or the nimbus nimbus stratus because it's just a, a thick layer of clouds and they're also tall enough but yeah it's not very distinguishable 
that Stratus Cloud and Zero Stratus are also very interesting because they're kind of like a blanket of clouds, a very thin blanket, and because of, because of the reason why that they're so thin and so wide, uh, and they create this kind of neat looking halo around the sun uh, when the sun is shining through those clouds. So there's also a neat um, thing about those clouds. And there are cirrus clouds which come in all sorts of shapes and are very very high up in the atmosphere. Uh, and it's like really crazy shapes you can see there. Lenticular clouds are more around mountain ranges and um, uh, I wanna, I wanna look up how how often in, in the history they have been mistaken as as U, uh, UFO, UFOs, and if the if the if that like the the disc shape for you know alien spaceships actually comes from this shape, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> so I'm curious about that, and I'm, I want to look that up later. And then, yeah, also contrails, because they also are clouds, they are water vapor, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, and I have a lot of pictures. Uh, yeah. So, I've been ignoring chat for too long. Uh, Doc's name is Rosie, a very, very sweet name, and she's six. Oh, not that old yet. Uh, uh, do you do much traditional airbrush work? Cloud seem like an airbrush favorite subject. Um, in general, I don't really do that much traditional art anymore, and I never done airbrush stuff. So. But yeah, it could work pretty well, I think. Uh, with airbrush, um, I could probably benefit from, from the color theory of ideas. Yeah, yeah, I mean, feel free to uh, to watch those. They uh, they are a bit old. I made them during my first year back then in 2016. Uh, so they're a bit. If you compare them quality-wise with what I currently make, uh, there is a huge difference. But the stuff that I, I explained in those videos is still valid. So. <clears throat> uh, that's a lot of clouds, see it? A lot of clouds. What's the reference board program? It's called PureRef. I'm going to write it in, in chat. Um, as a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going to release a new video about how to search and collect um, reference pictures and reference materials. And I will also explain this program that I just showed. Um, so, if you're interested, you can also watch that video and um, it might be helpful. Um, and I feel like for other purposes, other than just uh, like collecting art references, it could be useful. Just because it's a neat way to collect pictures and have them at one place and you can just zoom in and out and they still have original quality. So, yeah. <clears throat> All this cloud talk brings me back to my 11th grade word ge ge geography class. I didn't think I still had memories from high school. <laughs> ah, we didn't. I, I, we didn't really learn about clouds. I think maybe at some point we learned about how how rain is generated, but also not really in detail. Like for example, I didn't know that. You know, uh, I'm gonna show it again. Like, these clouds here cannot generate rain. I didn't even know that before I started researching uh, for for this current tutorial topic. But only, they have, they have to have a certain height and produce uh, ice all the way up there. And it's kind of like a circulating... Um, system that's going on inside that cloud which then um, makes sure that uh, the droplets can get large enough to fall down as rain drops and yeah it's it's like a whole process going on it's not just drops get larger and then drop from the air i mean 
certain rain clouds can work like that if you have a very very high humidity climate like in rainforests for example but most of the time like in other areas of the world that's not how it works <laughs> <clears throat> Uh... Hey Lucid, how are you doing? Work quick hello from me, hope your clouds are happy and little... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're doing well, the clouds. How are you? I hope you're also happy and little. <laughs> Whatever height you are. <laughs> uh... Clouds were part of an uh, elective class I took when I couldn't get one of the 30 seats in calculus available in my year. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that class uh, in, uh, in exchange. Also, interesting to hear that calculus was so popular. Calculus. <laughs> Hmm, interesting. <clears throat> I've learned a lot about clouds uh, from this stream already. <laughs> yeah, uh, there, there is a video series, a lecture series that I've watched on YouTube, which taught me so much. And I even, uh, it's, it's like from, from an actual professor. Um, and... I even contacted him and asked him if I can use some of his materials because he also got a lot of really good photos and videos of just clouds, uh, like time-lapse videos and stuff like that. And <clears throat> and he even gave me the, his okay and and I'm gonna credit him in in that tutorial video when it finally comes out. There were 400 students in my graduating class. Wow, that's that's a large school. There were like <clears throat> I think 40 students in my graduating class. 40? Like split up in two classes. That's about it. <laughs> oh my god, wow. Uh and we're still talking about still talking high school, right? Yeah, it's still high school. Hmm. <clears throat> I should do a little bit of painting and not just talk all the time. Uh, I did uh, advanced biology and chemistry, or you know, uh, of, uh, out of uh, out of uh, textbooks in in the cafeteria because the school didn't offer them. Oh, I see. So in general, you're very. We are interested in these kind of like sciencey topics and always want to learn more about them. That's that's very cool. And also often, if you read uh, like if you study those kind of topics by yourself, uh, it's it's often better than learning and uh, learning them in high school. I've learned uh, because. Especially nowadays, because you have so many materials, especially if you are capable of speaking English and understanding English. <clears throat> and sometimes the teachers you have in high school aren't really the best at explaining certain things. I had, for example, the thing, <clears throat> the, the case of uh, so after high school, I went to university to study physics. Yeah, physics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, barely has anything to do with art, I know, but that's what I went for. Uh, and in physics, you have to learn a lot about ma math, of course. And so <clears throat> during the summer break before, like after high school ended and before uh, university started, I wanted to brush up on my math skills and math knowledge and I watched some video series and, and learned from some books and as I tell you some all of a sudden those things that you learn that you learned in high school uh, 
all of a sudden made sense. Like, why you actually make those calculations, like, what are differentials and, and, and derivatives and, and whatnot, and like, what do you do with that kind of stuff? All of a sudden it made sense. <sighs> Amazing remix? Yeah, so much good music that I got. Uh. <coughs> it was about 2,000 students in grades 9 to 12. Oh dear. I can't, I can't even imagine. Oh my god. Our school was so small in comparison. I don't even think we have a school that is that large here in Vienna. Although I don't really know a lot about other schools. <clears throat> um, I used to think I was smart. I was mostly arrogant. I was a physician working on a radio radiology specialty before I got sick. <clears throat> um, I mean. I mean, sometimes there is a, a like a, a delicate balance of knowing more than others, and and still considering yourself to be on the same level. I mean, yeah, you 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 learn, you keep on learning. I also kind of was a little bit arrogant, I do have to say during my high school years and I mean my my high school years were a, a, a thing <laughs> oh god <clears throat> I'm not gonna go into detail a bit in that but yeah I had some faces I had some faces oh dear I was quite an edge lord <laughs> uh, it, it, it was just it's just you you have those phases and you learn from them and it's still in the end made you who you are today <clears throat> a degree in physics demonstrate a commitment to learning how to understand things in your own i think it's the best uh, bachelor of science to get that, uh, that said got a bachelor of philosophy before my md oh also cool uh, I don't have an actual degree, I do have to say. <coughs> so the thing is... <coughs> Sorry. Um, I studied physics for about five years. Given, uh, like, like, you can subtract a little bit from it because it took, it took kind of a break in between. But yeah. Uh, um, at least it was transcript, transcribed, transcripted, in, no, 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 inscripted um, in, in, in university for five years. So, um, also, I'm sorry if I'm not very good at talking. I, English is not my native language, and I love to use it as an excuse. It's not like German. Uh, my German is much better. Actually, it's getting kind of worse <laughs> than my English skills. But yeah. Um, we were all teens someday. Yeah, this is. I mean, who didn't have some kind of awkward or, or edgy face during their teenage years? It's just. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, at this point, I also can laugh about it. It's, it's fine. Uh, fortunately, we do have the opportunity to grow and learn as we age. Uh, you're absolutely right. I'm a pretty cool dude now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you're a pretty cool dude. I can, uh, unironically, I can, I can say that. Uh, sure, it's not not the degree that matters. It's what you learn. Yeah, 
Uh, so yeah, I, I studied physics because back then in high school, I basically had two choices because there were two things that I was both interested in and good at. That was art and physics. Like only physics, like chemistry, I, I didn't really like biology too much just memorizing stuff and like I was also not very good at memorizing stuff but physics was nice because it was so logic based so in the end I went for physics because I mean the job chances are so much better than art I mean, what are you gonna do with art and back then I had no idea what I could possibly do with making art and also <clears throat> there were way less opportunities and options compared to nowadays um, but yeah so I started physics and during the, in the first years I was doing pretty okay but then <clears throat> it get, got more and more complex and it was less and less logic based I mean logic based still to a degree but not like like quantum physics for example it's everything is still logic based but uh, trying to truly understand it is a thing that's actually impossible because how we perceive our world is very different from how quantum physics work for example and i had a lot of problems with that and so if you if i cannot really understand it with my human, normal human mind, uh, then I had a lot of troubles learning that, that kind of stuff, and then it went to just memorizing stuff, which, it, which as I said before, I am terrible at. And so I got worse and worse, and had to rely on others more and more, just to get through. And during my last year, the, there was in particular a, a test that was Theoretical physics, uh, electrodynamics. And I was just, oh my god. Theoretical physics, so very math based. Almost completely math based. And electrodynamics also. I was so terrible at it because just for some reason I cannot make sense of it. Of like how. Those freaking, freaking electrons work in those conductive materials, and when that conductive material also is moving and and rotating, maybe and stuff is happening, and I don't know what's going on. It's just, ugh. And I did that test for several, several times, and I completely failed every single time, and I just couldn't do it to the point where. The next time I would have done it, would have been the last time. And if I would have failed that time, uh, then my studies would be over. That That's kind of the rule, that you can do certain tests only a certain uh, number of times. <clears throat> and if you, if, 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 if you fail, you're out, basically. Uh, and yeah, at that point I was just... I was not feeling good about it, it was... I, I was feeling like such a loser, such an idiot. Um, because I also invested so much time into it, so it's, it was a really hard decision. But at the end I decided to stop studying physics because it was just making me unhappy. It was not the world that I really wanted to be in. I, uh, uh, when I think about it a bit more closer. Uh, Ulfgar, gonna disappear now. It was fun hanging out with you. Thank you for dropping by. It was really nice to see you and talking with you. And I hope you enjoy your curry. And that your experiment was successful. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. So, <clears throat> for the sake of also my mental health, I stopped studying physics. And it's not like I lost interest in physics, but it's just this... There was just this wall that I was not able to get over. Um, because it's just, things got too complex, too complicated, it's just... It's... 
if it's simpler like classical mechanics or something like that then I don't really have too much of a problem of understanding it and I can enjoy it because it makes sense for me but then the higher level stuff it was like an abrupt wall that was right in front of my nose and it's just nah And then I went into arts and started making tutorials and ever since then I'm trying my best to make it work and it's still not quite working out and time is running out and yeah. But still, even though I'm struggling right now, um, I definitely think that I made the right decision and of stopping uh, my studies, my physics studies. Curve was great actually, yeah, that's good to hear. <laughs> uh, the human brain is a thing of uh, dico dichotomy, to me, uh, however you would pronounce that. <laughs> uh, yes and no, black and white, one thing. Yeah. Uh. God damn it. Uh, one thing can't be two things. Quantum physics says that one thing uh, is two things. Yeah. Oh dear. Or even more than that sometimes. Yeah, it's just. Uh... Meow, meow. You moved. Mm -hmm. Let's move that too. Uh, okay, let's try. <laughs> let's try this again. Yeah, yes and no, black and white, one thing can't be two things. Yeah, okay, okay, I actually read that. <laughs> Oops. Um, being a student is expensive and sometimes you have to earn a living. Uh, I mean, here it's not that that expensive, here in Austria. You... <clears throat> like, if you study after uh, under a certain amount of time, then it's for free. And even if you go over that time limit, it's not that much that you have to pay on a semester basis. Like it's almost nothing compared to what you pay in the US. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, still have to pay rent and, and stuff and blah blah and so yeah. <clears throat> Um, having a doggo is on my eventual to get list. <coughs> uh, uh, wait. A dog cam? Okay, I was confused. <laughs> uh, I was confused, like, you, don't you already have a dog? Okay. <laughs> well, so, so does it mean that you, that you also stream, Jay? Uh, I didn't know that, or maybe I forgot because my memory is terrible as it always is. Uh, well, I thought tuition was pretty reasonable here in Canada, but Austria is way better than last year. Yeah, um, studying in general in, in Europe is not that expensive. Although I don't know the details about certain other countries, but for the most part, it's not that, not that big of a deal. And so we have like students who've studied for more than 10 years and like are long time students who kind of just do that as a hobby. Like they, they work on the side and just study because they enjoy it. Or. Um, we had also really old people um, in the in the seats who um, already were wearing rent. They were already retired, 
and just also did that as a hobby just to learn physics I mean there are some um, fields that are that have that have entry tests and not everybody can get in there for example medicine or law um, it's not that easy but physics you just inscribe and you go there that's it <clears throat> Although I don't really know exactly how it is nowadays, the, back then when I was studying, the, the numbers of students have steadily increased and uh, lecture halls have been getting fuller and fuller, so I don't know what they're doing nowadays. And Well, nowadays it's like... <laughs> nowadays it's barely anybody because of the pandemic, but you know what I mean. Um, it used to be super intermittent, um, but I've taken up a Wednesday evening time slot. It, it would be awful in your time zone, though. <laughs> it's it's 15 o'clock here. Uh, yeah, yeah, time difference. Uh, I do not know what super intermittent means. Or what does intermittent? Uh, occurring at irregular intervals, not continuous and steady. Ah, oh, okay. I learned a new word. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my streams are do not have any sort of schedule whatsoever either. <laughs> um. Also, part of the reason is that I just need to be in the mood for streaming, and it's not that's not every day. Or sometimes I'm just too busy with other stuff, and <clears throat> you know it takes time to prepare everything and turn on the lights and then prep up the cameras and blah blah blah, and then post on social media. And. When I do that, I want it to be worth it, and I can put enough hours into the stream, and then in a good mood, and have enough energy and stuff. So yeah, that's why I don't have a schedule. But I usually say when I'm about to go to uh, to go live on on a certain day and in Discord, for example, and also announce it on on Twitter. So yeah. Um, I want to take some community college courses, but COVID came along and then as I was looking into registering originally. Mm. Yeah, COVID. <clears throat> but maybe in the future. I would go weeks to months between streams. Yeah, sometimes it's the case for me too. Although recently I've been a little bit better at that. And Made sure that there aren't too large for gaps in between streams. You know, the schedule. Yeah, that's good. I used to have a schedule, but you know, it's just sometimes it was just exhausting. And the thing is also, I'm not trying to become successful with streaming. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be realistic here. I'm not a good streamer. Uh, you listen to me just now talking and uh, uh, you can definitely tell that I'm not the best at talking. And art streams in general aren't really the most popular anyways. So I'm not gonna get anywhere with this, with this stuff. So I'm mostly doing this for productivity reasons. Uh, when I'm streaming I don't have any excuse. I cannot get distracted by some other stream or some videos or video game. No, I'm here because I'm supposed to make art. This, this is what I promised and that's what I have to deliver. Although I'm also not the best at that because <laughs> I talk a lot and just don't really focus on on on, on the drawing, but well. <laughs> <coughs> Um, yeah. 
that's the main point of it and you know just also social interactions uh, the few people that usually come to the stream uh, it's, it's always nice to talk with them uh, yeah I wasn't painting enough over COVID, so I decided I would use the stream as a way to hold myself accountable to painting regularly, since I usually want to have uh, prep done for it uh, before stream 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, streaming is, is, is really good for that too. You kind of like give yourself a kick in the butt <laughs> to, to be more productive, to make more art. And don't get me wrong, I love making art, but sometimes it's just exhausting. It's just depending on w at what stage you are in your painting, um, it might get a bit repetitive and boring, and it's just uh, like this example. This, for example, here is just painting these highlights on all of these little clouds, and it's just not the most exciting thing in the world. And so it's very easy to get distracted because there are more exciting things around you. And while you're streaming, that's not really something you can do. Or at least shouldn't do. You have people that watch you and judge over you. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, also, as I said, the social aspect is wonderful and it's just really enjoyable to talk to all sorts of people and if you're already part of a community like we are in, in, in the crafters communities, then you see people dropping in from those communities like Alfgar for example just now or Lucid, you know, we, we all know these people and love them. And it's great, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun, it's like you make friends. And I made a couple of friends just through streaming and it's wonderful. I love it a lot. The problem is that I don't love making art, uh, I love showing off my art, which is more of an awful personality flaw, but uh, not really a hobby. <laughs> and it's not awful. Um, you created something and you have a right to be proud of it and, and show it off, it's nothing wrong with it. I also love doing that and totally admit it. When I'm done with a painting I get really excited to post it on... on on my pages and hey check it out and I hope that people are gonna like it it's just yeah just like when when the little kid is making a little drawing and shows it off to mommy and then you're really happy when mommy uh, hangs it up on the fridge and it's just the same thing <laughs> just like instead of hanging up in the fridge it's like retweets and likes and whatnot <laughs> And there must be some aspects to painting those figurines that you uh, that you actually enjoy. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. And it might be also very relaxing for you. And just it's also very nice. You don't have to worry about diffusing mental self deprecation. It's an anti. It's the antidote to my fairly huge ego. <laughs> Alright. Uh, but yeah, that's just what I do. <laughs> so I'm probably not gonna stop. <laughs> I 
Okay, we have got an understanding, yes. Wonderful. Still getting so excited to listen to this new music that I have. It's just ah, it makes me even more motivated to find even more music and ah, oh, so much good stuff out here. Freaking awesome! <clears throat> I really enjoy using the models in the games I run, and I don't have the money to pay others to paint them, so it's a uh, delayed gratification thing, and I know the better uh, uh, they're painted, the more people will like them. Oh, yeah. Oops. I also make uh, a lot of things simply because it's cheaper to make themselves than to buy some. So, like, for example. Um, I work a lot with cardboard and tin cans. <laughs> uh, so, like, I'm, I'm doing a lot of upcycling. Simply because I have the materials, I need some kind of platform, I need to have a little table, I need to have, like, a little door that blocks the cat from getting to my shoes or whatever it is I need and just... Gonna make it. Is it really? Is it fun to make it? Not really, but still, it is. I save money with it, and even though it, it, it of course looks crappier than what what you uh, what you could maybe buy, <clears throat> but it's also a thing that you made yourself, and it's, it's kind of cool. I would say, meow meow, meow meow, it's meow meow. There we go. What is it? How about we take a little short kitty break? Hello, kitty meow. Just for a few minutes. Because I'm working at the at the standing desk and it can get a bit exhausting after a while. Not that sitting isn't exhausting either, but yeah, it's highly recommended that you take breaks in between, like every hour or so, and sometimes I forget the time. In order to prevent my feet from hurting like hell after the stream, I better take some <gasps> breaks in between. Sorry about that again. <sighs> Um, half of the terrain on my war gaming table is hot glued together from Actual of the Orange. Oh, there we go. I got some good use of it. Uh, actually, I've been replacing it since I got a 3D printer. Oh, that's cool. But I assume that you're still using some kind of like recycled uh, mater materials and if you have to have something in larger bulks i assume because isn't like the material from 3d printing kind of kind of expensive i don't know much about 3d printing i do have to say but it's something that has fascinated me for quite a while and 
Maybe in the future I can also get into it, that would be cool. Meow meow. Meow meow. So are, are you also making 3D models or you're just getting the 3D models and print them out? Boo boo boo. I'm too sleepy. <clears throat> I use the filament style printer, so it's actually fairly affordable. Um, 30 Canadian dollars for one kilogram. Not bad. Hmm. I mean, so cannot really compete with the price of cardboard and aluminium, but still definitely cheaper than I imagined. Definitely cheaper than printing ink, for sure. Ah. Boo boo. Oh, boo boo. Oh, would you, would you just. You see something? There's nothing. <laughs> I have to buy 3D models or find them offered for free. I have very limited modeling skills. I see. I mean, that's. That's a complete uh, skill of in itself. I recently tried um, tried out Blender and make something in it, and boy oh boy, is the learning curve steep. It's 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 a lot to learn. I don't know anything about other three D modeling softwares, and if Blender is maybe just really complicated. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> But I learned a lot, and the next time when I do a project, it's gonna probably go a bit smoother. But yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot about looking up online tutorials and just looking up everything online, googling, and yeah. But the good thing is there are a lot of resources out there. Um, I did a set of giants for a war gaming army uh, that would have cost 860 to buy from Games Workshop, but I put a reasonable uh, fast meal for about $50 for files and 50 to 60 for plastic. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I mean, they're on, they're not painted. That's that's the thing, and then, and then you're putting the, the work into uh, into painting them, and then that way you save a lot, uh, a lot of bucks for sure. The blender is super complicated. I use Fusion 360 for my modeling, but those are all mechanical parts. Okay, never heard of Fusion 360. Mechanical components, okay. I see. I mean, the nice thing about Blender is also because there are so many resources out there. So if you if you have some kind of question, you just type it into Google and most likely you're gonna find something for the specific problem that you're having.
Um, it's a CAD program, so it's more engineering focused. Okay, I thought I thought so when you mentioned mechanical parts. <clears throat> I see. Mm -hmm. You're so happy. I'm such a happy kitty. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I rub her nose, she gets like really tired because she has to close her eyes and then she's kind of, kind of like half falling asleep and then all of a sudden she gets startled. Oh! <laughs> I'm falling asleep. <laughs> it's so funny and cute. Boop. Boop. Uh, computer aided drafting. Thank you. Actually, didn't know what CAD meant. So <laughs> you assumed right that I needed to be educated. And was falling asleep or it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Certainly are. Although I never managed to make her actually pass out and fall asleep completely by rubbing her nose. <laughs> That's just sweet. Alright, let's get back to it, shall we? My wife just got home from work, so I need to head out. Have a good stream, alright. Thank you for dropping by, it was very nice talking to you. And getting to know you getting to know you a little bit better. I wish you a lovely rest of your day. What I'm doing right now is, as you can see, I use actual white, not like this like kind of mid-tone that I have painted here. As you can see, there's a difference, and a small difference, but it's noticeable. I'm just painting some highlights at the edges, mostly. And also, painting some little bits here and there, and maybe erasing some tiny things. Um, because right now it's looking definitely too blocky and I need to have more like tiny details in between and stuff to mix it up otherwise it look it doesn't look natural enough yet <coughs> oh my god it's so burpy <sighs> That's the dilemma of having to eat before streams, so you have energy, but also you're gonna burp a lot during the stream if you do that. <sighs> At least it's it's the case for me, and I don't know why it happens. When I when I talk after I ate, I burp so freaking much. By the way, um, so I said I collect a lot of music and I collect them in different um, categories. 
So this right now is like my energetic playlist. Okay. Come on, Lex. Lay down again. Yes. Good kitty. Barely moved. Barely moved away, but <laughs> had to stand up, of course. Just to get the butt a little bit in a different position. <laughs> um, yeah, but this is my energetic playlist. But I also have a chill playlist. And how about we switch to it right now? Uh, there we go. Oh, it's much chiller. I also have a Halloween playlist, but that will have to wait until October. And I like to have two different kind of playlists, chill and energetic, because, um, you know, uh, I don't want to get tired during the stream. And so uh, I like to have energetic music to also make myself energetic, more energetic, more lively. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes it's just nice to have some chill music in the background. Uh, but it's not like exactly music that you would listen to when you go to sleep or something. You know what I mean? It's not like sleep inducing. It's just chill. And I got a lot of new music in that playlist too. So... I'm on the right screen. Let's find actually some songs that are new. Like this one, for example. Oh. I have to make the, the thing wider. Ah. The, the title is cut off a little bit. That's a problem with some of these songs. Uh, names and titles and descriptions, they're just getting really long sometimes. Uh, let's fix that, shall we? Um, want to fix it. Okay, I think that was a little bit too much. So let's do like this maybe. Alright. Now let's try to move this underneath. Um this is the color paper, right? Yeah, there it is. There we go. We'll have to fix this on other screens too, but I will do that another time.
So for the chill playlist, I also got a lot of the like, jazzy, chill, funky music, and it's really great. <sighs> Dang it. Sorry about that. My sneezes are always loud, so I'm very really sorry about it. Fortunately, I have. I use compression for the mic, so it doesn't get all of a sudden incredibly loud. But still. Surprise somebody. Yeah, by the way, I'm still playing Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon for the Switch. Still enjoying it. Only slowly but surely I'm starting to want to switch to a different game. The thing is, I don't really like playing several different games at once. When I have a game, I normally pick only that game and I play it until I'm finished with it. <laughs> and the post story content of Mystery Dungeon can tra can be dragging a little bit. Um, it's a little bit grindy, I do have to say. But it's not too terrible. But yeah, I don't exactly know what I want to play next. It's gonna be... I have two things that I might want to check out. Uh, that come to mind right now. It would be Final Fantasy VI. Because I still have never played that game completely. I just started it. Uh, but never finished it. I, I started it on my smartphone at one point, and that was not. This is not a good platform for that game. Ah. <clears throat> Freaking playing games on a smartphone. Like retro games, especially. Um, and then. Uh. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, I think is the complete correct uh, title. That's also a game that I want to check out. As a Zelda fan, of course. And I did enjoy Hyrule Warriors quite a lot. So yeah. At some point I also would like to check out 
uh, Monster Hunter stories. But there's not really too much of a rush with that game. Oh yeah, and there was also a lot of like really neat folk music that I was able to find in on OC Remix. Stuff that I don't know would normally not really find among remixes, video game remixes. But they have such a wide range of of different genres. It's it's so cool. Discover so many new things over there, and it's just really neat. It's one of this, those things I wish I would have discovered so much earlier. And as I as I read at the beginning of the stream, that community ha has existed for over twenty years at this point, ever since nineteen ninety nine. I was a kid back then, and. People already made such awesome remixes. This is from the game Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, so this particular uh, remix. So let's see. How old is this one? Um, Eastern Horizons. That might be already enough. Yep. From 2004. Yeah, 2004. The exact date is not really included, it seems like. Uh, wait. Okay. Can you see when it was posted? No. So I have to go after the evaluation that was posted. Uh, and that was from 2004. So yeah. <laughs> 2004, I mean seriously, it was 13 years old and this, this really nice music was made and was available on the internet. I could have listened to it and checked it out and, and stuff all the way freaking back then when I was a teenager. And I never knew about this. And it's, it's just... It's especially fascinating when you find something that has existed for so long and you ask yourself, how, how did I not know about this? Ah. Already back then, like in 2004, there were hundreds of songs on that platform. I don't know if their policies back then were the same as they are today with you know using that music for your own videos and stuff but yeah not that I was making mu uh, videos back then I would have just listened to it but still I haven't gotten to Chrono Trigger yet, but I'm sure there are also gonna be a lot of really cool remixes for that game. And it's also kind of the neat thing. Uh, sometimes you have like remixes of several different games mixed together, not even not even always from the same franchise. Like this, for example, has Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy mixed together. It's really cool. And it works. That's the kind of the create, really creative stuff that you would never think of searching by yourself. 
I, w I only found that because I just was checking out all the songs and then you find something like that. So I've changed the, the tool that I'm using to uh, to a more, um, how do you say, not soft, but not solid, but uh, like, a, like a harsher, but harsh, sharper, that's the word I was searching for, uh, like a sharper texture. As I'm trying to here and there fuse some of these clouds together at least a little bit because they're not all not all of them are perfectly separated from each other. You know? <sighs> Another thing that I still need to learn is how these kind of clouds are actually forming like why are they making this kind of pattern this 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 neat pattern um, what kind of like physics are behind this and when I was w watching the, the lecture series that I talked about um, that in particular was not really mentioned so I need to check out some other resources for that to learn about it. At some point I also would like to make my own music again and some some nice little tracks. And the next track that I'm gonna go for is is gonna be something simple. Just some piano music, maybe maybe one or two extra instruments and little accents. But that's about it. I'm listening to this song, like I've been thinking about it a lot. I want to Make something that kind of sounds like this. Not necessarily the same... Um, what's the word again? What's the word again? You know, like A minor, B major, the, 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 those are different something something. Not scales. But you probably know what I mean, you know. Um, so not ex not exactly that, but you no, know, I I really like to have like a really deep bass notes on a piano, like dun, like like it shrinks into the song like some kind of bell all of a sudden, dun, kind of dramatic, but not like. Like super exaggerated. And I want to mix that into my next song. I know some other songs who do that and I really like them. So yeah, I want to draw inspiration from that. Ever since I got sick yesterday, man, nose. It's itching almost the whole time. It's 
driving me crazy. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not gonna be able to finish this painting today on stream. It's just taking me too long because too many details, but that's okay. Just gonna finish it off stream. Like every now and then I want to have a painting that has a bit more effort in it. To show off something nicer looking when when I when I make the actual cloud tutorial at some point and not just speed paints which look neat but are also kind of sloppy because they're speed paints after all to mix it up a little why not work on the power lines right now i can return to the clouds at any point so let's mix it up but for that uh, how about we actually use a vector layer because it's a very structural um object like a very structured object with just lines so i think like that would be perfect for vector graphics also because i want to replicate that over and over again and uh, with vector uh probably will, will be easier so uh, thickness is actually fine okay <laughs> um Brush size should be, of course, the same for both. So, there you go. It's also something that I'm trying to get more used to, just using vector graphics, vector layers and stuff. Ever since I made that video about uh, filling in line art digitally, in Blip Studio. I learned about the convenience of vector layers. Uh, yeah, why not? There are still some things that I don't quite know how to do yet. Step of ankle neat thing about vector graphics is I can take any line like this line here for example well, nah, I'm on the wrong layer why are you not okay let me just do this then I can just take any line and and let it point somewhere else and it's very convenient Something I still don't know is how to merge vector lines. I don't know if that's actually possible in this program. But also the thing is, I don't have to make it perfect right now. It's it's fine. If it's an, if there are like little mistakes, like a line poking out here and there a little bit, it's it's really not that big of a deal. But here and there, like this 
this here, for example, I have to correct afterwards. Because ah. and I wish I could just merge the lines together. Maybe there is a way. I don't know. But I'm not gonna find out right now during the stream. So I'm just gonna draw this tower once and then we'll just copy paste it over and over again in order to you know, achieve this kind of pattern because they're identical so why not why not make it a bit easier for ourselves The clouds are already gonna take enough effort. So. Like here, for example, this is not lining up as it should be, so I could just change the line real quick over here and it's working again. And I have to make a correction because these two lines would diverge. It gets wider the lower we go, so of course this distance here would also increase and not be as narrow as I sketched it out.
Last thing is, I can copy it because all of these towers are at about the same height. So if I copy it, perspective is still gonna make sense. If I have this perspective grid that I used also for sketching it out, if I just follow this line over here, you cannot really see it well, but like if I draw a line over here. Along this line, the height is always the same. Now I moved some of these towers a little bit to, to kind of mix it up and not just have it perfectly spaced out. Um, <clears throat> because it's look, look kind of boring and maybe there's some hills or it has to avoid something and, and, and you know, go around. So uh, they're not exactly in a perfectly regular position, but still. Everything still follows the, the same height along this line. And so, if I move them slow, lower and lower, still, I can just copy them and then just make them smaller and it's totally fine. The perspective is still gonna be correct. And yeah, I also used only one point perspective for this uh, because more than that would be overkill. The more lines I, I add, the more convoluted this tower looks like, but yeah, it's just how it looks like. As long as I still can kind of make sense of it and know where to draw the lines, it's fine. It's totally fine. Just have to draw some X's, it's all no big deal. Kind of a neat pattern is forming right now, actually. Kind of like a star-shaped pattern. Neat. Hmm? Thinking about it, I'll draw this it also doesn't make any sense, it does so. Let's be tilted a little bit. Um, not necessarily.
Oops. Um. <laughs> Startled me a little bit just now. So, if I get back to this structure, I will have no idea. This looks. Very compli complicated. Really not easy to keep track of these lines. Uh, where to put them? And I might oversee something somewhere, but that's fine. Nobody is gonna notice that because look at this, it's just. Ah. Maybe I'm gonna make these branches on a different layer. Just keep the bed simpler. Just. Or they'll pass it over here and so I can build this I'm just a bit easier. So
You know, part of the reason why I also want to find so many music tracks is because I want to have a decent length for the pl playlist. Play length, that is. Um, so that whenever I stream, um, you won't, first of all, you won't have repeating songs. And also, I just. Uh, like to listen to all sorts of music and not listen to the same music every single time when I stream. So sometimes there are song, there would be songs in a stream that didn't play the stream before. And let's see, what is actually the current l length? Okay, for this chill playlist I have over five hours currently five hours all of the songs combined that's pretty decent most of my streams are like more about four hours long so there are gonna be some songs that are not playing and will maybe play the next stream and so it's like it's it's a bit of a mix and when I'm completely done with searching through all of OC Remix and maybe finding here and there some other YouTubers and, and, and other musicians who make you know, music for, uh, that you can use on streams. Who knows how long my playlists are gonna be. Uh, to totally possible that they're gonna be twice as long as they currently are. Twice as long, like over 10 hours. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of variety and I love that. I, I really love that. I want that. And I love that some of the songs are just really silly, <laughs> and I love that too. It's, it's... It's a very nice change of pace. Change of mood. This one is not really following the perspective correctly, so let's change that. We change it so that I have more grid lines. You can easier see it. 
There we go. This one is alright. Now I cannot really quite copy this structure down here because it's at a different height. The perspective is going to be slightly different and I want to... I want to do it properly. So it's going to... I'll draw this again. But it doesn't take that long. <coughs> oh, it's gone. Oh, oh, you're way over there. Maybe I can point the camera at her down there. Might be a bit too dark. I kind of see her. <laughs> Just wriggling around. Meow meow. Meow meow. <laughs> you see the kitty. You can see her butt. Her tail. Well, still works. We can still look at her under the table. <laughs> it's a bit dark. But it's okay. It's just Oh god, that angle. <laughs> oh no, kitty. Not very graceful. What are you doing down there? Silly boo. Ah. Thinking about it, I might the next game that I start might be just simply Final Fantasy VI. Also because I want to experience the the music in that game. Um, <clears throat> because um, I already know that it has a lot of really good tracks. I, I heard a lot of the music already at this point. Um, but also on OC Remix. The Final Fantasy game that has the most remixes is Final Fantasy VI. 
by far even. Not even Final Fantasy VII has more. <clears throat> and yeah, I, I gotta experience that game finally. Took me long enough, so really should get to it. And I know that's also a lot of people's favorite Final Fantasy game. The neat thing about those SNES games or Game Boy Advance games and stuff like that is uh, if you play them on an emulator, it's, it's especially for JRPGs like that, uh, it's so much more convenient because you can speed up the game. And, you know, those JRPGs, how they are, sometimes there's a lot of grinding involved and a lot of random encounters. And you want to speed up the process of a little bit. If you play it or on like an original version, it takes quite a while to get through all of that. But if you just have the option to just speed up everything, it's, it's really nice. I, for example, played Chrono Trigger like that, and it was it made it even better because I didn't have to. You know, when I didn't really know where to go and I went through uh, certain areas over and over again and encountered all of these monsters, it was nice to just be able to speed up the game. Uh, not have to deal with that uh, in normal time. That's one of the very few songs from Breath of the Wild that I got on my playlist. As I said before, it's not... It's kind of hard to... Like, just, just listen to the music. It's not hard, but like... No, there are not like really memorable melodies in that game. But this remix did a good job. Mixing up and make, make make it very atmospheric. I believe that that especially was not not easy. I can totally imagine Just getting these like kind of random melodies that are just scattered all over the place in the Breath of the Wild music and make an actual song out of it. And now we have the tower. Okay, and then the process is gonna be uh, that I will copy those two, uh, copy those uh, layers. And so I have here from six.
And the thing is, and I need to figure this out still. Um, when I scale vector lines like these, uh, you can see it gets very kind of like blotchy because if you scale vector lines, the um, the line thickness, if you if you have that option checked or not checked, it is. Um, line thickness will not change but it's still the seven pixels width that i have but everything is much smaller and therefore it's just i could also do it the other way around and it's just really thin lines all of a sudden it's pretty neat but yeah we want to make it smaller so i can just choose this option to make the, the lines smaller too and it properly scales like about here and there we go and at any point I can go in and use a tool to make those lines wider again and that's the convenience of vector lines Especially for something like that. So at this point I just have to scale it so it um, overlaps with the sketch that I already have. I already did all of the measurement, uh, the measurement stuff beforehand. So I just need to match it. these are on separate layers so if I feel like uh, one of this some of these uh, towers could be at a different position I can just change that I can just move them around very convenient could have done is to calculate how how much smaller every single tower is gonna get percentage wise and just take those numbers over and over again uh, and just use them for the scaling uh, but I didn't do that and it didn't really matter so it's fine Yeah, Skyward Sword and the uh, re-release came out on Switch. A lot of people were very excited about it. Um, I myself am not gonna play it because I already played it on the, on the Wii and I enjoyed it. But don't need to play it again right now. It's fine. Do not feel the need to do that. I think of, now that I think about it, in general, I haven't really been replaying games all that much in the recent years. But I just want to play new games in, in order to just, you know, finally having experienced them. They can like participate in discussions and stuff. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. 
So right now I feel like the lines of this initial tower could be a bit narrower. So how about we do exactly that? Red line with Alright. I'm just gonna do this here. See the difference? Do this for the other layer too. There we go. And I can reverse it at any point, and it's really nice. Mm -hmm. all of these towers together in one folder, clip a layer above it, change the colors. First of all, oops. And the further they're at the back they are, the more they should just fade out. Of course. Let's do that. Skyward Sword had some really great music though. It isn't my favorite Zelda game. It's pretty low, but on the on my favorite list. Even though I enjoy it, I love all the Zelda games, but that particular one is not my favorite. Um But it it certainly had a lot of really good music in there, for sure. Really. This song. Zelda, like the Zelda theme and Fee and uh, Fi, Fee, Fi. Um, both of their themes are great. I'm changing the, the color from just straight up black because the, the black is just too strong, too much contrast, and therefore it would look unnatural. We don't want that. And then I'm thinking about. Oops, wrong tool. Uh, there. So at the top, they're gonna be a little bit brighter. It kind of indicate that there's some kind of. Oops, it's not clipped. Okay, if this layer setting doesn't work out. I 
Then there are of course gonna be the cables too. They will be added later. But yeah, I feel like that was enough for today. Meow meow, we have moved. Jeez. But yeah, so, let's see. We strained for about three and a half hours, that's, that's decent. Um, so, and if they are still online, then we already have a nice retarget. Yep. So, uh, we are gonna uh, raid our friend Ulfgar, who was just here a while ago. <laughs> so, spread some love. Over there. Um, just gonna wait. We're started. I have to remember that I have to do this before I start the, the, the raid because if you drop into the chat after the, the raid has initiated, then you're not gonna be joined in there. I don't know exactly how it works, but I think that's the case. But yeah. If you're on the YouTube side, please, uh, you can move over to Twitch in order to join the raid. We're gonna visit somebody else. Um, I really have to go to the toilet, so I'm gonna hurry up. So, uh, um, yeah, follow me on socials if you wanna get updated uh, on when I stream next time. You uh, uh, can look out on twitter or discord those are the two places where i normally give you updates about the streams and you know uh, you can check out my art and everything on the other social medias and also check out my videos on youtube and yeah and join the, the community on discord there are lots of lovely people over there um and i love always uh seeing new faces and i really have to go to the toilet so now hurry up. Uh, start the raid. It's gonna start soon. Kitty. Yeah, it's good that I got this extension cable for the camera and just gonna put it on the floor whenever she's on the somewhere else where I normally wasn't able to get her. So yeah. There we go. Uh, go over here. Alright, and yeah, 